Hi, I've just come in from a run on a very cold snowy day as you can tell and it just occurred to me that there's so much that I've learned this year from running about how to dress and what to do to stay warm when you're outside in the cold that I thought I'd share that with you. So come on in and I'm gonna get a cup of coffee and share some ideas with you. I've lived in cold climates for a long time, about 20 years in Canada and Connecticut and St. Louis, but there are things I didn't know until I started running. So I wanna share these things with you, the tips I have for staying warm and what I wear when I run and some of the key things that I've learned in the last few months. I've kept a journal. Every time I've gone out, I try to write down what the temperature is, what the wind chill is and what I wore so that I would start to pick up a sense of how much to wear because I found at first I was overdressing. I was wearing too many layers. So on the coldest day of the year that I've been out, it was like minus 11 degrees centigrade and probably minus 18 degrees centigrade wind chill. So what would I wear on a cold day like that? I would wear two long sleeve shirts. The first one is, these are hat quarter zips. This bottom one is 15% merino wool. It's a tech fabric, so it's very thin. It's a blend of wool and like polyester and spandex. And this one I got at Costco for only $12.95, great deal. If it's really, really cold, I might have another one that's a 45% merino wool that's even warmer that I got from the running room. Costs a lot more, but it's for the coldest days. Then on top of it, I'd wear this shirt. And you can see this is a high-tech Nike. And you see it's got a kind of a waffly fabric. It's not very thick, but it's really, really warm because it traps heat. So I wear this on top and it has long sleeves and they have holes for your thumb so that when you're getting dressed and you're, you know, you don't, the key is to not have any skin exposed. And these sleeves also will wrap around my hands like the mitts that you see on baby sleepers. Right now I don't use that because I wear gloves, but in the spring when it's just a little bit nippy, I think that'll be nice on the days that my hands are just a little bit cool. And I wear my watch on the outside of my shirt because I often will set the timer because I want to do an interval run, so this way it's easy to get to it. On top of that jacket, I'll just, well let me show you the pants first. So the pants that I'm wearing are windproof. And these I bought from the running room, so they were probably about $100. They were fairly expensive. But they're windproof on the outside, on the front, and then they're kind of fleecy on the inside. So I find these quite warm. If it's a little bit colder, like maybe it's above freezing, then I might wear what you would typically see runners wearing, these sort of uh, legging type things with reflective. But I just find that in the really cold days, I like these looser, but wind resistant pants a lot better. And then on top of that, my jacket, and this is the interesting part, is I have a jacket that is, once again, I bought this from the running room, give them a little commercial, but it's totally windproof and moisture, water resistant. So all the seams are taped, so no wind gets through. And even if it's raining or snowing, I stay dry, it's amazing. But see, notice there's no lining, there's no down is just a layer that stops the wind because we generate a lot of heat when we're running and so even on the coldest coldest days I've worn these two layers and this one this one windproof jacket on top of that I use this thing that's called a buff I didn't know about these before but what I find is I don't want any wind to go down my neck so I put this on, and it's a little bit like a scarf in that I put it you know, underneath so it keeps the wind from going down my neck. And then when I'm running, I wear this over my face so I'm not breathing the cold air because I get sometimes I get a little bit asthmatic if I'm breathing cold air, so this works wonders. And then I wear a wool hat on top of that. So the only thing that's showing now is around my eyes. I have these really cool windproof gloves that Beth gave me for Christmas. They're awesome. The brand is Manzanella. They're a little bit loose, but they just work wonder wonderfully. I love them. And inside the glove, I use a hand warmer. 
for some reason, I've never used these before in my life, and they're amazing. They're, they're not expensive. I got a pack, once again, thank you, Bob, at Costco, a pack of like 100 for about $9 or something, some inexpensive price. And you just take them out and you of the package and you shake them up. And what happens, let me see what they look like. Here's what they look like in the package. I'm sure you've seen them. You've seen them everywhere at stores. You've seen them at, at hardware stores or sporting goods stores. And they probably have them even places like Target or outdoor stores. So take it out of the package and you shake it up. And this contains <coughs> iron filings plus some other type of chemicals that react once they hit the air. So it starts getting warm. If you actually held, if I held it like this for a while, it gets really, really hot. So you put it inside your glove where it's not exposed to the air and it keeps your hand warm. And something, there's something psychological I find that when my hands are warm, the rest of me doesn't feel cold because <coughs> dressed like this, I actually don't get cold. And I wear, I wear wool socks. Yeah, see my nice wool socks and they keep my feet warm and they keep my feet dry even if it's mushy or slushy. So today we had a big snowstorm yesterday. So they had cleaned most of the streets and the sidewalks but there was a lot of ice. So it's hard if you're going out there and it's icy and you're trying not to step in an icy patch and you don't want to fall down. And So what we got were these little cleat type things. They're called traction aids and there's just it's just a little rubber a rubber thing that you strap on to the bottom of your feet and it gives you these little spikes on the bottom of your shoes and once again I got those at Costco too they were probably thirty dollars at Mark's work warehouse and like nine dollars at Costco and they're amazing they work really really well because if it's in really slushy we found we don't slip in the slush we don't slip in the Snow, the only thing they don't work quite as well on is like really smooth black eye, so you still have to be careful there, but it makes a huge difference. So we were able to go out today and have traction and run in the ice without falling down. I also wear a flashing vest because most of the time we're going out, it's still dark because we have such short days in the winter that, <coughs> you know, it's, going out before or after work or whatever it's just it's dark so I have these flashing yellow lights once again I think I got these at Mark's work warehouse which is um, it's just like a where you buy work boots and things like that and so I wear this so that the cars can see us when we're walking in there running in the dark but even with this on I almost got run over by a garbage truck about a week ago because we're going down the sidewalk and we come to a small side street, see side street, and right, and no traffic light, nobody coming. Right about the time we're just about to step into the street, a garbage truck turned left right in front of us without even looking, without even seeing us there. So it's very important <coughs> to pay attention to the cars and the trucks because even if we're wearing a flashing vest with flashing lights, they're not paying attention to us. The other thing I wear, and I wear this uh, around my waist, it's a little belt, and it gives me a place, I'll put it on and show you, so I can carry my keys, because I found I don't like anything jangling, and even though I have lots of pockets in my pants and my jacket and my um, shirt, everything has pockets, I wear this little thing called a flip belt and it's a little elastic band that you can wear around your waist or your you know low on your hips however you like it and it's got I think I've got it on upside down doesn't matter but it has all these slits so I can put my keys in here and it holds my keys securely and then I can put um, my phone, it's big enough to put my phone in here, my iPhone. And I also carry, I always carry my health card because it's like a driver's license, but for me it's got my picture, it's got my ID, so if anything happened to me, people would know, if they found me, if I fell or something, they would know who I am and I'd be able to get medical treatment. 
I also carry a little bit of cash, a little bit of some coins, just enough to get a, get on the subway so that if I got exhausted or I sprained my ankle or something, I'm able to get back home because I've got enough for um, to catch the subway. So I'm not totally stranded, but I also don't have a lot of stuff in my pockets and things jangling and making noise. I For my water, I use this. It's a little water bottle that has a little hand strap so I can carry it just like this. It's very light and once again you've got a pocket if you wanted to have keys or tissues or something that you need to carry and you just squeeze it as you run. It doesn't spill. You just As long as you put the cap on properly. I found out one day when I didn't have the cap on right and the whole thing leaked. But anyway it works really well and to me it's once again it's kind of a psychological thing that I feel that if I have my water, then I'm going to be okay. If I get thirsty, it's right there. So I use that water bottle. But on the really, really cold days, I found that it freezes solid. So that's a little bit better to leave at home on those days. So I really have enjoyed running. And I thought that running was one of those sports that all you needed was a pair of sneakers and you just go outside and run. And I found that it can turn out to be a lot more expensive especially if you try to get the special equipment and gear, but it truly really makes a difference. The tech fabrics are worth it. They're different from regular fabrics in there. They wick the sweat. My clothes will be sweaty, but my body is not sweaty. And so it absorbs that sweat and it keeps you cool in the summer and warm in the winter. It's amazing that this is all I've had to wear on the coldest days that we've had in Canada with the, this winter which, as I said, the coldest day was minus 11, so it's not as cold as years past, but I still, I did it. We've been out three days a week, and we go about 7.8 kilometers a day, and that's about an hour, and I'm able to use my phone. As I said, my phone, I have an app that's called Map My Run, and so I can set the app, and it uses GPS, and it will actually track where I've been, and it calls out every time I've run a kilometer, if that's what I want it to do. And then afterwards, I can look at the map, and it shows me here's where you went, and here's how far you went. Because we're timing, we're going by time. We go in intervals of 10 minutes, and then we walk quickly for a minute, then we go for another 10 minutes. So we go for about an hour, and we cover, as I said, about seven or eight kilometers. I've also got a playlist and I found an app called jog.fm and you tell it how fast you go. So let's say I was going, I wanted to go about 6.14 minutes per kilometer. I'm not necessarily very fast, but that was the speed that I was doing. And so that equals about 135 beats per minute. So the app jog.fm website will pull up a list of songs that have the beat that's appropriate to use if you want to go at a 6.14 minute per kilometer pace. You want to go faster, then it shows you different songs that have a faster beat. So with the you can you can set up a playlist on your iPhone based on those songs they've recommended. And then in Map My Run, I can through that app, I can turn on the music, I can select the playlist, and I can do that through my watch as well, so that now I just have this one device, this one app, and I'm controlling everything so that I am recording where I'm going. It's plotting it on a map. It's saving the workout for me so I can look back and compare how I've done and where I've gone. And then I can listen to the particular music. And I make notes of, did we go uphill? Did we go downhill? You know, did we have a lot of traffic lights? Uh, you know, like, Sometimes the places like in the park are nice on nice days, but on snowy days, they don't clear the snow, so that's not where you want to go. And downhill, I didn't realize Toronto was hilly until we ran all the way down toward the water, and then we found out it was uphill the whole way back. So these are things I keep notes of to map my progress. But the main thing I just wanted to share was that what I've learned about cold weather and what to do out in the, how we manage in the snow and the fact that now, today, this cold weather and the snow, and I've been out running, I've done two 5Ks, I've signed up for another 5K in March, I've signed up for a 10K in May, and starting off my new decade, because I just turned 60 years old, and I'm running three days a week, and I am an athlete! Woohoo! High fives!